Hey, you guys, welcome back to another edition of Family Forum Fridays. Uh, each Friday, we try to answer questions that you guys have asked us either on site at our events or through social media, or a lot of the ones that I get have been asked in office hours. And I just, I want to have extra time to work them out for, for more of you that um, may have similar questions. So today, what we're talking about is something that David actually gets asked about a lot on site, and that is how can guys, how can men be involved in our homeschooling efforts? Um, I know that this is something that can be a stress point for the guys wanting to help, but it also can be, um, I, I, it can possibly become an annoyance for wives who want the help and the guys are at a loss. So let's talk about that today, shall we? Well, and I think the guys are, are struggling with this because they see what's going on in the home and they want to participate. And they may see the effects on, on the wife and on the kids and both positive and negative. And they're like, okay, how can I help? Yeah. And so this actually comes out of position of, of, of it's, it's really a positive thing. It's, it's love that, that causes them to do this and ask this question. And I get this question um, just about every single event. I mean, most notably I've gotten this question from some of our keynote speakers. You know, I remember wow. one, one time uh, David and Jason Benham, um, who are as solid as, you know, anybody, um, they were asking this question just because they wanted to, um, help in a way that was actually helpful for their wife. Yeah. And they were fine with their wife taking the majority of the load of homeschooling. Matter of fact, they weren't even sure if there was any other way to do it, but they wanted to help. Right. And so I get this question all the time because, the most natural way for the husband to work to 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 help homeschooling is to teach a class, and that's the first thing that people think about. Well, wait, 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 wait. When you say the most natural way, I think that you mean the first thing that people think about. I don't think personally that it's particularly natural at all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's rephrase well, that, shall we, we cut? We, we may be uh, uh, letting them in a little bit too much into our home <laughs> in, in that case. But um, I, I think that's, that is definitely the first thing that you think about. You yeah. think about that the husband thinks, okay, what class can I teach? And they may continue that, that conversation in their head with, okay, there's no class that I can teach. How can I help? Or I can't do it consistently. I travel, I work. It's it's if we try to do it in the evening, we we don't do it a lot of times. Um, and so the what starts out as a desire to help and serve actually turns into a, a stressor and a friction point for everybody because it's really hard to sustain daddy teaching a class that's outside of the time that would normally be a school school time yes and i'm not trying to discourage oh, that no, from, from from uh teaching a class if you want to teach a class by all means teach a class that works teach two or three classes that's you're not doing a bad thing if you're teaching but the the point that i'm trying to make here is that teaching a class is actually not the best thing that you can do it shouldn't be the number one priority. When you think of, hey, I am the husband, I am the father, how do I want to participate or how can I participate? Teaching the class is actually probably number two or three on the list of the top things that you can do that would be the most help in in, in homeschooling, heart schooling your children, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I would say that there's two things that would go ahead of that. Okay. And the first thing is, is that if you believe in heart schooling and what you are doing in the home is actually heart schooling, which to me simplified is that you prioritize mission over the education uh, function of homeschooling. Right. And, and you so want homeschooling to be a tool for that mission rather than a competitor. That's right. And so your goal is to reach the heart of your children into, you know, if you're a Christian parent. Uh, you have the same mission that 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 we have, mm -hmm. which is to bring your children to Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian parent out there, every single one of you have the same mission, and that is to bring your children to Jesus Christ. You cannot save your children, uh, but you can put them in positions constantly in which Jesus Christ can reach them and can speak to them and draw them to himself. Mm -hmm. um, and that is your goal. 
as a mother or father is you want to bring your children to Jesus Christ. And so homeschooling is a tool to do that because if you're going to disciple, you need time. And exactly. we could continue on through this and, and that's a whole nother podcast. But how can the husband participate in that? Well, the husband can participate in that by not only setting the vision, but keeping everything on that same vision. So you have a mission that you're trying to reach as a family. The problem that you run into with that mission is that every current of the world works against that. So there is all kinds of stuff. You know, the phone rings, you get texts, you have, you know, your your um, your mom or your dad talking about the the uh, the mother in law or father in law starts calling in just asking questions. You have children misbehaving. You have whatever. Everything is conspiring against you. Hmm. And so the husband comes in and he actually helps everything, everything stay on track, not in an accusatory way, not in a driving way. Maybe it's just purely by asking the right questions. How does this bring our children to Jesus Christ? Well, it also, this underscores the fact of how important it is for parents to be together in the mission, for parents to actually um, mom and dad to discuss what your vision is for your family and how you expect to get there. What are your goals? What are, you know, staying on the same page, having that communication really helps that. And then it it gives dad the opportunity to to easily kind of go into that role where he is helping things stay on track. And I'm telling you guys, us girls, really want that. We crave that leadership. We, um, you know, I talk to so many who, who just absolutely would love it if their husbands were more engaged in what they are starting to see as an entire home mission. Um, they, they really want you guys to be walking together with them. And this is a great time to get on board with that and to actually Help them then wade through the choices, just those mundane choices through the day. Having someone that says, yes, you chose correctly when you took that detour or when you um, had that heart conversation or whatever, that goes so far towards keeping your wife level and encouraged and focused on um, what she's really called to do. Yeah. I mean, to use a sports analogy, I mean, it's football season, right? Every coach designs a game plan for every single game. And so if you set out the game plan, then you have the 11 players on the field, offense and defense. So there's a total of 22. They all have their roles in that game plan. And a lot of parents, what they've done is, is that they haven't set out a game plan. They don't know what they're actually trying to achieve. And when you set the game plan, it makes everything else go so much easier. Mm-hmm. So to use that uh, illustration where husbands would understand, you got to have a game plan. You got to have a vision. You got to have a goal. You've got to be able to have a mission on what you're trying to achieve. And if you're going to take on the role of the coach or you're going to take on the role of the quarterback, whatever it might be, you have to be able to direct things and be able to talk about things. And it's, In a lot of cases, when you hear wives say, I wish my husband was more engaged, it doesn't take much for the husband to actually be engaged. Right. And I've um, used this example in the past where um, maybe the wife asked the question, uh, I, I have decided to use this particular curriculum. And what do you think of that? Right. The wife comes to the husband, says, I have this particular curriculum. This is what I'm thinking about using. And the husband says, that sounds great. I trust you, whatever you want to do. And then the wife may get really upset. (laughs) And the reason why she's getting upset is because what she was hoping to get out of that was she was hoping to be able to get questions, to get reaffirming questions that maybe would would help her understand or, or reinforce the decision that she has made. So what would those questions be? What would that look why, like? Why did you make this decision? Why why did you choose this curriculum over any of the others? How does this curriculum 
reinforce the mission that we have, which is to bring our children to Jesus Christ. What is it that you love about this curriculum over what we used last last year? Why do you think this curriculum is better for this child as opposed to this child? You don't have to actually demand anything as the husband. You can just ask questions and then get the answers and then have your wife answer the questions back. And then you say, I trust you. Sounds like you've made the right call. Yes. And so what that does for us as wives is, first of all, we get to rehearse out loud stuff that's been kind of in our heads. So I know why I chose, well, most of the time, most of the time, I know why I chose whatever I chose, whether it be curriculum or whatever. Um, But to be able to actually express and articulate that and then get the nod that, yes, that is within our mission. That sounds like something that whoever would love. I think that's a really wise choice. That has just elevated my excitement and my confidence in that decision exponentially. So I'm going to be a lot more likely to continue in that path, even when things get difficult or dry, because I know that he is with me. He understands why we went down that road and he was in favor of that. So the previous example where the the wife asks, I've thought about doing, I want to do this kind of curriculum. And then the husband responds back with, I trust you, whatever you want. That comes across as I just threw everything back at you. Mm -hmm. And so now, now I come across as not engaged where if I come through and say, Hey, I have this question and this question, I'm asking these questions regarding the, the way you came to that decision. Now the husband comes across as very engaged in what is going on. Not only that, but you're also directing the homeschool back into the vision and mission because you're reinforcing all that and you're not demanding anything, right? You've just asked questions. But, and so what is that that's done is that's reinforced everything that is happening in the homeschool makes her feel more confident, makes her feel like she's making the right decision. And it uh, it brings you engaged as well. So, you know, what's going on and you can do the same sort of thing. If you come home, and say, how did it go today? And then she says, well, I had to bring so-and-so aside and talk to him about X. Now you start asking questions as the husband, you start asking questions about that. Why did you do that? What were you trying? What was the the response that you were hoping for? Um, and and did you get the response that you were hoping for? How can we get a better response if you didn't like the response? You haven't demanded anything. But the questions that you are asking are informed by the mission and the vision of bringing our children to Jesus Christ that you and your wife had set forth beforehand. And so you are now engaging in the mission that she's asking for, but you're also reinforcing the vision and the mission of what you got the game plan that you guys had originally. Well, and you're also giving time and that taking the time to listen and engage in things like that is huge for us because Um, we know that you're busy. We know that you carry a lot of weight at work. We're actually very aware of that and sensitive to that. So when you show us that you are engaged in what we're doing, that goes farther than you will ever know. And so um, just making a point to have those conversations is huge because of the time and the love that is shown through that. But also, It gives you a much better glimpse, clearer glimpse into what is happening within your family throughout the day so that when you are there, you're jumping in. You don't feel like, you know, someone who's missed eight, nine hours of, you know, prime time, but rather you are able to jump right in. You're, you're aware of what's going on. You can ask about, you know, ask the kids about stuff because you have an understanding of what they're doing. It's, it, relationally, it's incredibly impactful, not just on your spouse, but on your kids as well. So that's the number one thing that you can do as the husband is, is that you can actually um, uh, keep everything focused on the vision and the mission that you guys have set. So you, you, first of all, in order to do that, you have to set the vision. You have to talk about the vision. You have to set the game plan and you have to, um, uh, you have to set all that, right? Um. And then the second part uh, of that 
is actually um, the second thing that you can do is love your wife. Um, and when you read those verses in chapter uh, Ephesians five, right, and it starts in in verse twenty two, uh, um, wife uh, submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives, um, uh, fathers don't provoke your children to wrath. I actually see that as one of the things that I see that in that is, is that it is telling you what the other one needs. So for instance, um, the husband needs to know that his wife is willing to follow him. That is a major source of confidence for the husband. If you don't have that, you get very insecure. Things start to not run right in you. You start doubting yourself constantly. Your wife is the same way. Your wife needs to know that you love her. And um, therefore, you have to show that regularly. You have to communicate that regularly. She is going to operate better in the homeschool, right? Which you've thought of as an education choice, probably when you started homeschooling. You didn't think about how homeschooling was actually impacted by you just loving your wife, but it is. Mm -hmm. So she's going through the entire day, you're off at work and she's at, you know, if, if this is traditional, you know, your family operates like this, like most of our families do, you're off at work and she's at home all day and she's homeschooling and she's like in the trenches dealing with the kids, dealing with the, uh, all the issues and the struggles that are associated with that, educating kids on multiple levels, uh, dealing with tantrums, dealing with whatever. And you're working, you come home and you're stressed because of whatever might have happened during the day and you forget to actually show your wife that you're happy to see her. That impacts her insecurity, that impacts her confidence, that impacts everything that has happened the entire day. She's wondering, what did I do wrong? Um, there's all kinds of things that go through her head because of that. But if you come in and you say, I love you, or you have flowers, and I use this example all the time as well. I know that there are families out there that say, don't bring flowers because it's too expensive. And I always say, bring them anyways. Don't listen to your wife. <laughs> bring them anyways. When she says they're too expensive, she's just trying to be a servant. She's trying to, to not think of herself. But the truth is, she wants you to bring her flowers. Um, and so do those things. I mean, you can cut them from the hydrangea bush outside, but bringing the flowers is a good thing, guys. So, so it makes a huge difference. But the other thing is, is that you can actually consider her self-care. And so, for instance, what I'm talking about is that maybe you pull her away from homeschooling. Um, maybe you just go out and get coffee and you just talk to her briefly. Maybe you just go for a ride. Maybe you go for a walk. Maybe what, and she just has a moment with you to be able to understand that you actually love her and that you're actually engaging in, in not just what's going on in the homeschool, but you're engaging in who she is personally. And, um, you know, part of love is that you cannot, when you love somebody, you cannot stand for them to be going through any difficulty physically or mentally. And so when you actually show concern for the fact that she's stressed, when you show concern for the fact that she is working really hard and she's super tired, she's not getting enough rest, she's whatever, you're actually showing her that you love her. And so when you come in and you actually pull her away and say, you know what, let's not worry about that. You're actually showing her that you love her. And so that would be the second thing, not necessarily in that order. Yeah. Right. We've given two things and I'm not saying that it's number one and then number two, you can reverse those. Maybe you should. Um, but those are the two top things you should do. Well, and I would want to throw in here as well. When you were talking about the self-care and actually taking care of of your wife in a lot of ways, sometimes that shows up in sending her away. I remember when the kids were, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to package that. Just give me a second. Here. I remember when the kids were young and everything was high intensity and high energy. And, you know, I had four, none of whom could, were particularly self-sufficient um, or self-directed at that point. So we were, we were young. David used to encourage me every Sunday night after church, 
to go out by myself and just kind of plan and think about the week. And he would he would hang out with the kids. He would get them in bed and do all of the things. And it was a great time for him because he got to have that special time with the kids. But for me, I was quiet and I was able to be an adult and I was able to look at my planner that I just loved and and think about what the week was going to hold and pray about that. And I was able to to actually think through what worked and what didn't. And it gave me headspace to do all of that. And then I would come back much more excited about the week ahead, strangely rested after, you know, just a little bit of time away. But I have always thought that that was one of the greatest gifts that he gave me in a long string of amazing gifts that he gave me. Um, But when the kids were young, just that time, it was his idea, uh, but just that time for me to go away and plan and pray and think and be was a tremendous display of love and care and um, actual trust and all of the things that just made our the homeschooling part of our homeschool work a lot better. I, I know that you were quiet and calm, but it, our home was anything but. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Because we were having like Nerf wars and <laughs> hide and seek in the dark and it was chaos here. Which is great because that is giving the kids that special time with dad doing the things that mom's not particularly inclined to do. Although I've done my hide and seek in the dark many, many times. Um, but it gives the opportunity to just hang out and pal around and play with daddy, which is incredibly important and impactful at building those strong relationships. And especially, you know, our two oldest are boys and they are unbelievably close to their father to this day. They are seeking his counsel on things as they are about to, you know, one is married, one is about to move um, quite possibly to another country and seeking their father's counsel. Well, that all of that was built on years and years and years of being engaged in their life, going to their ball games, playing Nerf Wars, playing, you know, a tag, airsoft. Every, airsoft, whatever Paint, it is, we paintball. played it. Um, but all of those relationships are built day in and day out in the things that nobody is going to give you a medal for, but they're incredibly impactful for strengthening your family and encouraging your wife and really strengthening those relationships that you have with your kids. So, I mean, these are things that I don't think that most guys think of, not that they're against doing it. Right. Most of the guys, I mean, this past, um, this, this past weekend, we were in, uh, we were just outside of Atlanta. I'm talking to, I don't know, 15 or 20 guys. And I actually brought these things up in that classroom. And every single one of the guys were like, Whoa, you know, it's just something that they don't, don't really think about. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would encourage you if you're a mom, a uh, wife, and you're you're listening to this right now, um, let your husband listen to it um, because I he either hasn't thought of this or he doesn't realize the impact of doing this because when he thinks of ways that I can help, he is thinking taking on the teaching load, and they're always the guys that I talk to are always very surprised when I bring these two things up as the number one and two things that you can do in helping your wife homeschool. The, these are massive. And it's not just, and I'll be honest with you, it, it's, it's, not, it, it, it's not just homeschool. These are the number one and two things that you can do in everything regarding your, your household. You can uh, keep your wife on the vision and you can also keep your, you can love your wife. These are the two, two things that are massive in every single thing that you do. And the other thing that I usually point out is, is that there's really, you know, there's, there's two main ways to, to, to lead your home. Um, you can lead it like a, a cowboy where you're, you know, driving from the back, you know, you have all these cows and, and you, when you watch people, I'm, I'm not a cowboy, but generally <laughs> speaking, when you when you see them herding cow, they are from the back and they're driving them forward. Mm-hmm. Where the shepherd 
that they talk about in the Bible that, that, that the Bible talks about. And um, the shepherding was very common in, in, it, dur during that period and during that time. And you would have a shepherd, they would have their herd of sheep, and they would sometimes be fed or in, in the same areas as other sheep. So there'd be these group of sheep that would be on the hillside and they would all be feeding together. And the shepherd would have a very distinct call that, that, that his sheep had heard since they were babies, since they were young. And when he would make that distinct call, they would all come to him. And then that shepherd would walk and he would actually lead out front and the sheep would follow him. And so that's kind of what I'm talking about here is that you help set the vision and then you actually are kind of the example for that vision and you actually are leading out front rather than driving constantly. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, that driving constantly is this much more authoritarian approach where the, the, what I am suggesting is that you're leading from out front. And so you don't have to drive. You just have to ask questions. You just have to direct just slightly and everything seems to fall in the line. Yeah. And so it comes with a level of trust. But the other element of that is that if you're the leader that you're supposed to be, trust becomes a lot easier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so that's the other thing that I'm actually encouraging here is that you lead more like the shepherd and less like the cowboy. Yep. So. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> you know, just to, to tack on one more thing to his point, when you have those conversations specifically about vision and about the way that, you know, why are we doing whatever we're doing? Why did we make this choice? Whatever. It helps us as girls to wade through the gazillions of thoughts that are crowding our head at any given moment. I mean, you guys have no idea. Um, just there's so much going on in our heads. And so when you help us stop and actually straighten out some of those thoughts, bring them all into submission to our mission as a family, line things up so we don't have all of these competing these competing priorities that just kind of are are attacking us in our brains because of the way that our brains tend to work. It's incredibly helpful. And so I can't encourage you enough to like David said, lead your family as a shepherd. Uh, get involved, have those conversations with your wife, uh, show her love in a myriad of different ways, whether you think that it's showing her love or not, that time, that concern, that investment from you goes so, so far. Um, and then it'll also give you a much better platform to build those relationships with your kids, because as mom is more leveled out, you're, you're going to find that your kids are more leveled out, that everything within your family works better. It just God's plan for families always, always, always works the best way. So um, I hope this has been helpful and encouraging. Uh, like David said, if you're a wife listening to this, I hope you'll share it with your your spouse. I hope that you will encourage him to listen in as well. Um, I also would encourage you to share it with others in your co-ops or uh, at your church. People that that you know this would be beneficial for. Just share the podcast. Tell them about homeschooling families. And uh, we would absolutely love the opportunity to serve their families as well as we uh, have podcasts that come up like three times a week. So lots of content, lots of answers to questions that people have. Um, and we would love to walk alongside your family in this way. So um, we tell you every single time we always end the podcast with a reminder that the Great Commission starts right there at home. You are called to bring your children to Jesus. And as you and your spouse work together in tandem towards that mission, you're going to find that there's a lot more peace in your home, a lot more intentionality in that mission, and that God will bless it in ways that will truly just blow your doors off. You will be so amazed and awestruck at the concern and the care that God takes for your family when you walk in his ways and bring your children to him day in and day out. So have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I look forward to talking to you again real soon.